All right. All functions do is convert inputs into outputs. So each function has two sets associated with it. Those things that serve as inputs and those things that serve as outputs. So the domain is all inputs. The range is all outputs. So the domain are your x values. The range are your y values. So let's look at the function where y equals f of x shown on the graph below. And we're going to look at f of negative 3. So remember negative 3, that is part of your input. So that is part of your domain. So negative 3, so it's where x equals negative 3. It's where y equals 1. Where f equals 1, so x equals 1, y equals negative 3. And where x equals 3, y equals 5. So can the function rule given by the graph give you a value when x equals 5? So we're going to look at x equals 5. So x equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So looking at x equals 5, is there anything on that graph that goes there? So no. There is not a y value. So there's not a y value when x equals 5. So is x equal 5 in the domain of the function? No, it's not because it's not one of the listed or it's not, um, the graph does not go over to x equals 5. Sorry. So give two other values of x that are not in the domain of the function. On the graph, the other two x values that are not in the domain would be 6 and negative 6. Both of those don't have the graph that goes that far over. Then we need to circle the following y values that are on the range of the function. Show the evidence on your graph. So um, you're going to have to go back and forth between your graph and what I am showing you here because I don't have the graph in front of me. Um, so let's look at y equals 0. This is in the range. There are actually three values where y equals 0. That means where it crosses the x-axis. Y equals 6 is not on there. There is no um, x values that go all the way up to where y equals 6. Y equals negative 1 is um, in the range, and there are three places where it crosses y equals negative 1. Y equals 3 is in the range. It crosses one time. Y equals negative 5 is not in the range. Y equals 4 is in the range. It crosses one time. So write the domain and range of this function using a single inequality. So for range, you are looking at y values. And for domain, you're looking at x values. For the domain, as far over on the, on the x-axis that it goes is negative 5. And as far over to the right that it goes is to the 3. And it does include those numbers because there are actual points at each of those. Um, there are coordinate points that fall where x equals negative 5 and x equals 3. As for range, the farthest down on the y-axis it goes is negative 4, and that is included. And the highest that it goes on the y-axis is positive 5, and it's also included. All right, so for this next one, you are given three domains, and you need to plug them in to find the range. So for negative 4, it's going to be f of negative 4 equals negative 4 divided by 2 minus 3. Well, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. So negative 4 has a range of negative 5. F of 6 is going to be 6 over 2 minus 3. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So 6 has a range of 0. And then F of 10 is going to be 10 divided by 2 minus 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So it goes from 10 to 2. So when looking at just the range, we use set notation. We put it in numerical order. 
the range for this actual set is negative 5, 0, and 2. Which of the following values is not in the domain of the function? f of x shown below. So we need to see, is there a negative 3 on the x? Yep, right here. So that one is in it. Is there a 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is nothing on 5. 5 is not on there. Negative 4 is right here, and 0 is right here. So 5 is the only number that is not in the domain of the function. Consider the piecewise linear function given by this formula. Determine the function's range. So what you're going to want to do first is graph each one. So I'm going to have the first one be red and the second one be blue. The first one, uh, f of x equals negative 1 times x plus 2 over 2. So that really becomes negative 1x minus 2 over 2, which becomes negative 1 half x minus 1. I know we haven't done a lot of graphing in here, but this is something that you need to be able to do. This um, number right here, negative 1, is where you're going to start on the y-axis. That is called your y-intercept. And then from there, you're going to go down 1 over 2. But you'll notice you're only going from negative 4 to 2 on the x-axis. So have we already gone to positive 2 on the x-axis? Yes. So now we need to make sure that we work backwards and go all the way to negative 4. So here is our first piecewise of our um, the first equation. Now the second equation, f of x equals 4x minus 10, you're going to start at negative 10. However, if you start at negative 10 on the y-axis, then you're starting on 0. But I only want to go from 2 to 4. So instead of starting at negative 10, I need to start at 2. So let's make a table real quick. x, y. So when x is 0, y is 10. And this 4 tells you that every time x goes up, y is going to go up by 4. And it would also probably make more sense if I did that correctly, because that's negative 10. So this becomes negative 6. And then negative 2. And then 3 becomes positive 2. And then 4 becomes positive 6. So we're really just going to be graphing um, these three points. So when x is 2, y is also negative 2. When x is 3, y is 2, and when x is 4, y is 6. So there is our graph. This is a piecewise, which means that we do not actually put any arrows on there. Now we need to look at the range. The range, we need to find the smallest number for y and the largest number for y. Well, the smallest number for y is negative 2, and the largest number for y is positive 6. So there is um, an inequality that you can use to write the range, or you could write the range negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's another way it could be written.